Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 22. So the last episode we covered why you need room treatment. So hopefully now you understand that this is not something to be taken lightly. It is huge. And if you ever want to stop that, you know, repetitious or the repetitive upgrade that you're kind of stuck into that rut, you know, always hunting for that sound, you know, this is going to be the way out. This is the way to do it. If you don't do this, you're just going to continue wasting money. No speaker exists that can overcome the room. And you cannot electronically fix any of this. If anyone claims that they can, or they got some, you know, some room set up software that can take care of these reflections, you know, they're lying, it's snake oil. The only way you can fix it electronically is to reach over there and turn the receiver or the, you know, the processor off. That's it. So, absorption. Everyone's heard of it. Everyone, you know, we've seen articles that are 20, 25 years old and, you know, that's what a lot of people think treating a room or room acoustics is. They think it's absorption. You know, get your mirror out, slide it along the wall. And by the way, using the mirror trick does work and that is a good way to find the reflections. But you slide the mirror along the wall, you know, you're sitting here and oop, I see that speaker. I put a piece of tape there. You know, come down a little further, I see that speaker. I put a piece of tape there. I come down a little further, I see that speaker. And then we're marking our reflections. And those are where they're going to be located. We do the same thing on this wall, you know, and on the back wall. So, you know, we can locate them pretty easily, but the thinking that all absorption is the way to go is caveman. You know, we don't do that anymore. Now, when you look at rooms that are professionally done, they look like Swiss cheese on the wall. We're going to go over what those are a little bit later. But first, let's go over absorption because even with those treatments that look like Swiss cheese, absorption is what's underneath that board that looks like Swiss cheese. So it's a, it is important too but we cannot use just absorption, at least not everywhere. Some places it is needed. So to absorb a frequency, we have to destroy it. So what we use is something that basically vibrates. When the energy from the acoustic wave, you know, we stick our panel here on the wall, and when that energy hits that panel, it will vibrate the fibers in whatever we're using, and it will dissipate the energy as heat. And that's how we absorb the sound. Now, when you look at different materials like, you know, rock wool or, you know, fiberglass, like compressed fiberglass, like a certain teed ultra black, which I like to use a lot, uh, Owens Corning 703, 705, they've been very, very popular for years. And it's, they're the same thing as ultra, uh, certain teed ultra black. And what those are, basically they're from the HVAC or the air conditioning world and they're used in vents or to, you know, to make returns, you know, to build boxes for vents and to line stuff, you know, air conditioning systems. And that's what they're really for and that's where you can go purchase those things. You can go down to your HVAC supply house and buy them. I mean, I've done it myself. I mean, that's the best place to get those products because that's what they're for. But when you look in the specs of those products, you're going to see acoustic specs specifications and you can look at those and actually see how well they absorb at different frequencies so there's a website you can go to called bob golds uh, well actually just go to google and, and search bob golds coefficient i just put that search in the search bar and it pops up his page and he's got a compilation of different you know absorption materials like you know anything from fluffy fiberglass to compressed fiber board, you know, like the Owens Corning 703 to Rockwell. He's got all of it in here. So you can kind of get an idea of what absorbs what. Okay, so let's just look at some fluffy insulation. You know, good old cheap insulation. Okay, 2.5 inches of it, all right, on the wall is going to be 125 hertz, you're absorbing 0.21 of it. That's the coefficient. That basically means, you know, base a quarter. A quarter of what's hitting it at that frequency is being destroyed. The rest of it gets reflected back. At 250 hertz, you're at 0.62, so just over half of it. So it's not too bad at 250 hertz. It's not great. 500 hertz, you're at 0.93. 1,000, you're at 0.92. So, I mean, now you're basically absorbing all of it, you know. It doesn't get to a 1 until you get to 4,000 hertz, and that's actually all of it. Um, some stuff is going to do better. Let's look at Owens Corning 703. It's real popular, 2 inch. On wall, at 250 hertz, it's 8 or 0.86. So, I mean, basically all of it at 250 hertz. So, this is much better than the fluffy we showed you a while ago. 500 hertz, we're already at over 1, 1.14. So, you can actually see the performance of what you want to use are different materials. 
you can actually, you know, if you're looking at something specific, like, like I said, I like Certainty Ultra Duck Black because it's black. It's not yellow or anything like that, so it's really easy to hide behind panels without having to put any other facing over it. It's already black. It's easy to, you know, it's not going to show through fabric. You know, you just go look at it, pull up the PDF, you know, go to, a, go to its info page, and you're going to find the specifications, and you're going to see this info, and they're all rated the same. They're going to be at 125 hertz. They're going to be at 250, and those are octaves if you don't know that. An octave is every time, you know, you double frequency. So 125, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, and so on. So you can see how low they absorb. Now, if you remember past episodes, we went over the vocal range. And, you know, 1K is kind of in the middle of that vocal range. If you get to 250 hertz, you're pretty much absorbing all the vocals. So your vocals are going to be nice and clean and detailed with a panel, you know, that absorbs that low. And also around 250 hertz, you know, usually around 300 hertz, you're becoming modal. Which means that these reflections, once you get to a certain frequency or low enough in frequency, the reflection won't be treated there. In other words, it's begins, it begins to pressurize the room more than being reflected off the walls. So, I mean, if you're getting at 250 hertz, you're good because anything lower, and there's nothing really there to treat because you're getting to the point of modal and, you know, that's going to rely on our seating. You know, we went over the, how to use the remote calculators and place seating. So at that point, we're getting, we're transitioning from reflective energy to modal energy. Now, to absorb a frequency, we really need to attack a quarter of its wavelength. So say a specific frequency, I'm not going to get the calculator out right now, but say, you know, a specific frequency is six inches long. So a quarter of its wavelength is going to be a quarter of that, so it's an inch and a half, which means we need a panel at least an inch and a half to absorb that frequency and to, you know, kill it, to really attack it well. So let's say we're using an inch and a half panel. Now, it's two inch panels are pretty standard just because they do well, you know, to 250, even sometimes to 125 hertz if you're using good material. If you put the speaker or this uh, panel right on the wall, you know, you've got an inch and a half. You know, let's say it's a, it comes in and goes right back out, but you're absorbing everything, say from 120, or say 250 hertz. Everything for 250 hertz is being absorbed. So anything that's left to reflect is going to be below that point, and it's going to be modal. So really nothing's going to be left to, to bounce back out of that. If you space this off the wall, and there's an air gap back here, say there's, you use some two by four blocks, so it's an inch and a half off the wall, there's a little air gap. Okay, now it begins absorbing right here. When it first hits the panel, it goes behind the panel to the wall and then comes back. So now you're absorbing, you're catching that, that uh, frequency wave at a longer depth. So now this frequency is hitting the panel and what's left, what's not absorbed initially will continue on and then it's gonna hit the panel again. So now you're attacking a longer wave. So now instead of an inch and a half panel, you've got a three inch, or it's sort of like a three inch panel. It's not gonna be as good as, you know, a panel that was three inches thick of solid material, but it's gonna be much better than, you know, just an inch and a half panel on the wall. And another very important thing I wanna point out, if you've got a panel right here, okay, and here's your reflection, coming back to your seats, this reflection is not hitting straight on, okay? It's hitting at an angle. The angle of incidence is not directly straight ahead. So you're not going, let's say this is a two inch panel, you're not going through two inches of material. You're going through much more because you're hitting it at an angle and then bouncing off. So if this panel is rated at 250 you know, hertz, let's say it's a 0.9, you're gonna be over a one. And at 125 hertz, if it's a 0.7, you're probably gonna be a one there too because you're not hitting it straight on, you're passing through the angle. It's pretty safe to use two inch panels, but make sure you look at those coefficient specs because there's like products that don't work well at all, like foam. You know, a lot of people will go find cheap foam and egg crate. Okay, they'll get egg crate. Now this egg crate may come out to two inches at the tip of the egg, but then it comes down to a half an inch, you know, it's better used, you know, on top of a mattress. It is not going to do much in here because it's not going to absorb down into the vocals like we need it to. So what it will do is strip away the high energy in the room. So, you know, you put this stuff in the room, this egg crate or, the, you know, this foam, 
that you know at 500 hertz it may be like a you know 0.4 it's not really doing much it might be doing a little bit heck it might not even be a 0.2 at 500 hertz some of it's really bad especially egg crate because egg crate is so thin you know it's you remember that quarter wave you need to attack the wave you know you walk into a room with egg crate or foam you clap your hands and it sounds kind of dead because you're, you're killing that high energy but you're not killing the vocals not as thoroughly as you need to so we're gonna learn a little bit later in the next episode you know how to really treat the room and we can actually do more harm than good we're treating the area we don't want to kill by deadening it but not absorbing where we really need it you know to get that focus the vocal focus and clarity so egg crate is not a good idea foam is very often now there are a few companies that have decent foam that is somewhat comparable to some of the better you know like the insulation stuff like that we use but we need to look you need to do your homework and you need to ask questions and you need to look at those specifications and make sure the coefficients are you know worth putting in your room so that's how absorption works so basically we send the energy into it it's going to vibrate the fibers in the material and to be dissipated as heat and you know if you grab something like say you get a panel of Owens Corning you know 2 inch 703 or some rock wool or something like that and you talk into it it's eerie I mean it's like a black hole of sound you know you're you look like a fool over here doing this uh, I mean just playing around with it because it, it, it's really 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 cool so I just remembered I had some rock wool upstairs, so I went and grabbed it. It's 2 inch rock wool, so I mean at 125 hertz, it's probably around 0.7, you know, 70% is being absorbed. It's really, really good stuff. But anyway, you know, and this is rock wool, it's real fibrous. It does kind of fall apart. Guys, I know I showed y'all the rock wool, but like I said, I have some duck board upstairs, so I figured I may as well come up here and show this to you, and I'll edit it in. This is a piece of duck board this is some certainty ultra duck now this is only one inch right here that big piece against the wall is an inch and a half but uh, you see how rigid it is it's very rigid it's compressed fiberglass so uh, anyway that's it and that's a two inch piece of rock wool down there two foot by four foot now in some people especially with fiberglass don't want to use fiberglass you know they're like the fibers are going to get in my throat and you know it's going to turn into a boil and my head's going to explode but you have to remember this stuff is using hvac it's already all through your house all of your your vents have this lined in the box every single one of them now it's not always rigid but it's basically the same thing it's just like a semi-rigid is normally what they use you know in little boxes and stuff but now like your returns if your returns are built like custom built they're going to use a rigid fiberglass like duck you know duck board is what they're using so it's it's in your returns and your air conditioning system with the air blowing past it anyway you know when we use these in walls behind fabric for one they're behind fabric and they're they don't have air moving across them i mean not like your air conditioning system so you know the thinking that they're dangerous to use in your room it's not really true. I mean, you know, you're not going to go up there and stir it up and take deep breaths, you know. But then again, like I said, it's in your air conditioning system. This stuff doesn't just fall apart. I mean, this one here does kind of because it's a different material than like a compressed fiberglass. And this is not even, uh, they do make a rock wool. I think this is rock wool 40. They make a 60 that's rigid. This one's not rigid. It's more of it just kind of pulls apart. But, uh, you know, when you put it behind fabric, it's not going to be disturbed. So if it's been deemed safe for your air conditioning system, it's going to be just fine behind fabric on your walls. Now, I will tell you, when I was building my theater room, I had a uh, pass load air nailer. And uh, when I was doing some of the framing for the baffle wall, and I mean, when that thing we hit, it's good. chow. <clears throat> It's loud. It actually uses like a rocket fuel. Well, not rock, I don't know if they call it rocket fuel, but some type of a fuel to drive the nail in, like a little mini explosion. It was loud. When we got the room acoustics put in, you know, it was kind of eerie because all of a sudden it went from pow to and it was much quieter. I mean, it was just really eerie. So, uh, you know, it's crazy how much difference a room itself sounds once you get the treatments up. So, all right, guys, don't forget to look down in the description for this episode's cool find. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the new episodes. The next episode, we're going to cover diffusion and combo panels. And then that's going to lead us into how to determine which ones to use and where. 
All right, guys, I'll see you for the next one.